Hello, welcome back to Sydney's Stoma channel. My name's Chris, how are you? I hope you're doing really well. I hope you're all staying safe during these COVID times that many countries seem to be coming to the end of all their lockdowns, but COVID itself isn't gonna go away, is it? So anyway, let's move on. We've probably heard enough about COVID, although this video is actually slightly COVID related. So as per the title of the video, I have spent some time in hospital this week, and I say some time, only a couple of days in hospital, due to the Crohn's disease deciding that it was gonna cause me some problems. And it was the first time I've been in hospital since uh, Sydney Stoma was born. So we're looking at over three years ago, three and a half years ago. And like I say, first time I've been back in hospital. And that's what this video is about. It's about going into hospital during COVID times. Because here in the UK, if you go into hospital, you can't take anybody with you. You're on your own. And all the times I've been in hospital, nearly every single time via a few, my wife's always been by my side. And my wife's my absolute best friend as well and she's always been by my side and takes away so much stress of being in the hospital for me so i got used to being in hospital uh, it just became second nature to be in hospital but then i've had this three and a half year break and we're in covid times and i went back into hospital and i was on my own and that's what i want to talk about i want to talk about how that that made me feel and how things were actually in the hospital and this is a bit of a two-part video because there's a procedure that I had while I was there, um, I had an enema through the stoma and I'm going to talk about that in part two or a second video really. So yeah, so I went back in this week and I, had, I was at work and I was talking to a group of people and I had this incredible pain in my stomach. There was no build up pain, no little pain turning into a big pain. It was just bam, this huge, huge pain in the side of my stomach which the type of pain it was, I knew it wasn't going to go away and I knew it was going to require a trip to hospital. So I phoned my wife and to say, where are you? Because I knew she was off work um, on a rest day. So I was going to call her and say, can you come and pick me up from work? I need to go to hospital. But she wasn't answering her phone. She was actually in a meeting that was to do with something else. So I got a colleague to take me to hospital. And there was the queue outside the accident and emergency place. I was thinking, how long am I going to have to queue for in this absolute agony? Um, in the UK, we call accident emergency. It's what's known as ER or the emergency rooms across the world. So I had to stand in this queue with this incredible pain, looking at the people in front of me and wondering why they were there. And a lot of them were laughing and joking and didn't look like they were in a medical and emergency. Um, but that's life, isn't it? So the queue went down, I got, got seen and uh, saw by a triage nurse back in the waiting room. Uh, everyone was wearing masks at this stage and then I got taken through into what they call the majors where I was put on the bed and they asked the normal lots of questions. Now this is the point where I normally have my wife with me because you can't take someone in with you. And I had that, I had this real strong feeling of fear of, I haven't got my sidekick, I haven't got my wife, I haven't got my best friend who just takes that away. I'm now in agony and I've got to start talking to these, you know, the, med the doctors, the medical professionals. And lots of people have to go through that, don't they? But I've been fortunate enough that I haven't always had to go through it on my own. And I felt that fear of, how do I do this? How, how do I explain everything? I'm in all this pain and what am I going to do? And what's the next steps? And that I, I found... Considering I was so used to going into hospital and being in hospital, I found it really difficult to start with. I really struggled. I really struggled to tell the doctors about the pain and where the pain came from and how it all started. Because I was just worrying about moving forwards on my own and then going on to the next ward and being in hospital on my own. I'm rubbish at being on my own. I do like my own company, but most of the time I don't like being on my own. I like being with people and, and having company. And hospital is the place where you want that company, really. So um, went off for x-rays. And what, in a nutshell, what had happened is, for some reason, my intestines just completely decided to pretty much not stop, but really slow down. They really didn't want to push the poo around the system, which caused it all to, to clog up and block up, which created that incredible pain. So I had my x-rays, which yeah, identified that there wasn't anything more sinister other than the intestines were just not moving, just not really pushing everything through. So I then had an x-ray, as I say, I then moved up into a ward. And again, I felt a bit lost because normally my wife would always accompany me up to the ward and my wife would talk to the doctors and 
just take that away from me. Um, the only thing that was good is one of the doctors had actually bothered to read all my notes, which is massive. My notes are huge. Uh, so that was quite nice. The doctor came over and said, I've read all your notes. I've read all your history. I know how many operations you've had. I know exactly what's gone on with your Crohn's, etc. So let's just deal with what's happening now, which was nice. And that took a huge weight off my shoulders. But I still had that worry and that fear of what's next? What if I have to go to surgery? What if they do want to do an operation and I've got no one to talk to? Yes, my wife could be on the phone, but it's not the same as in person. So it just made me think and really think about all these people that, that do live alone, that do have to go through these horrendous procedures that we go through with Crohn's disease uh, or ulcerative colitis. And the amount of people that go through that on their own, I think is... It's really, really sad, um, and I really feel for them. And that really brought that home to me going into hospital in, in COVID times, is what must it be like for people that are on their own? And my heart goes out to you, and I think everyone needs to kind of talk more and, and help each other more to, to help people that are on their own get through these things. So it, it, was, it was a tough time, but I did relax into it, if you can relax in hospital. Once... I'd had some pain meds and I knew what the problem was. That helped me calm down because I was terrified I was going to have to go and have surgery. And I'm used to surgery, but I also like my job. I like being at work, so I didn't want to have time off. And it just feels like, again, it's more time off due to Crohn's. What's the employer going to think? They're having more time off. Not that I've had any for three and a half years. So all of those worries I had to kind of deal with on my own, really. And I found that I found it tough. I did really find it tough. Um, to be lying on that hospital bed on your own not knowing what was coming next or who to talk to couldn't have visitors um, and I, that was all I ever used to live for when I was in hospital was visiting hours and waiting for friends and family to come and see me that's what I lived for when I was in hospital that's what got me through it um, but had been in the hospital a lot of times helped it, it certainly did help because I know how things work in my, my hospital so that did help having that history of being in hospital an awful lot but just being there on your own and not being able to have visitors I found that really tough really really tough and again it just made me think of people that do have to go through these things on their own so there is a bit of a is there a message to this video I don't really know but I think we should help and support people more than we probably do and I think Covid has highlighted that um, in a lot of ways for a lot of people it's easy to get kind of self-absorbed in our own lives isn't it and sometimes we have to be self-absorbed sometimes we do have to look after ourselves absolutely but I think we could all probably do more to help others as well and I think Covid really has highlighted that I think a lot of people have reached out and needed help in these Covid times so and we need to carry on with that because Covid's going to be here forever Covid's not going anywhere um, and people are always still going to need support and help, whether they've got COVID or whether they've got any other type of disease and they're on their own. Being in hospital on your own, it's a scary thing. It really is. And I've got history of being in the hospital. Yet going there on my own, knowing that no one could come and help me was, or not help me, but it is help. Yeah, it's my wife, you know, answering the questions, dealing with the doctors, putting them in their place when they need to be. I had to do that on my own and I did with a couple of doctors I told them what I needed what needed to happen and told them to crack on and do it but that's only experience that's helped me with that if you haven't got experience of being in hospital you trust the professionals don't you but you know your body better than anybody else I certainly know my body better than the doctors and once I knew what the what was occurring that it was all just blocked because the intestines were slow I knew exactly what I needed and that's what I said to the doctors I said I needed some form of enema to go in the stoma and I need oral laxatives to help really push this out and see if that gets things moving again. But it's it's history and it's experiences that have taught me to tell doctors what I want, not what I think they think I want. And they agreed. They said, yeah, we'll absolutely do that. But if you're on your own and it's the first time you've gone into hospital on your own, have the courage to tell the doctors what you think you need because you might be right. Just because they're medical professionals, it doesn't mean that they're right. They get most things right, but it's your body and you understand your body. And if you think there's something your body needs and you make sure you tell that doctor, tell them what you think you need, because I can assure you, you could well be right and you've got to stand up. So if it's, you're in hospital for the first time due to Crohn's or whatever, and you're on your own, really be strong, stay strong, 
tell them what you want, tell them what you need, and just stick with that and be really strong with it. I only did two days in hospital, that was enough. <laughs> uh, whilst I was there, I did have an enema, which I'm gonna talk about in a second video about having an enema with a stoma. So I'll save that for part two, if you like. I hope this video makes lots of sense. Um, it kind of sounds like it's making sense, but you're the people that are watching it. Apologies, I've been away for so long. I really do struggle with trying to think up content and I don't just wanna flood YouTube with kind of videos that aren't really relevant as such. So that's why I haven't done a video for so long. So I thought I'd come on, talk about my experience of going into hospital on my own. So there you go, I'm all done. I'm gonna stop talking, time is going on and I'll do the other part too and get that out at this, some point this weekend as well. I hope you're staying safe. Any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I always try and answer the, every single comment that goes on. If I can help anybody, by all means reach out and I'll see what I can do for you. Take care everybody, I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.